Hello, everybody. Hello, come on in. Hold on one second. I think my chat stopped. Give me just a second. <laughs> there we go. It's moving. Hello, everybody. Y'all, welcome to the first video. Actually, technically, it's the second in the playlist, but the first block in this series. Y'all, we are doing 16 Quilt As You Go blocks together in this series. It's going to be a longer series, but the cool thing is, and what I'm hoping for me, because sometimes I get project ADD, right? I lose interest, but each one of the blocks is uh, completely different from the others, and so I'm really hoping to stay this excited about this project all the way through. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. All right, so uh, let me just start by saying this might be the longer video in all the series. Um, these will be live videos, and I know that not everybody likes the live format and uh, taking time to answer questions, but y'all, uh, one of the reasons why we go live is because we have formed a relationship, and I love spending the time with you. Another reason why I like to go live here on my channel is because sometimes I catch your questions and I'm able to answer them right on the spot, right? So they will be live for this series. Hello, everybody. The cool thing is, is uh, if you are very experienced, you can come in, get the block, and skip right on out, right? We're doing the live step-by-step -step for each block during the videos so that uh, you can see all kinds of techniques that you might know, you might not know, and to spend time with one another. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right, so let's start by just announcing the dates on the screen. You'll see those dates. There's one change. We usually go live on Fridays. But there's one Friday where I'm going to be out of town. So we're going to do two blocks in one week. All right. So note the dates. Jot them down on your calendar so you don't miss if you want to join the live. There's always the replay you can come back to. I also want to start off by thanking my moderators. Thank you all so much. Thank you for answering questions, for pointing people in the right direction, for keeping an eye on the chat. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you. Y'all, um... As we get started, uh, Joyce just said we have a tornado watch. She's not far from me. Miss Joyce, I'm quilting your quilts this weekend, just to let you know. Uh, we do have some weather coming in, and I'm hoping it's after our live, but I've heard rolls of thunder. So if I just completely disappear out of nowhere or my screen freezes, just know that uh, it wasn't something that I did. And... Um, and usually I don't like to have my machine and my computer plugged in during a thunderstorm, but we're going to just pray that everything goes smooth while we're live today. Uh, in the description box, y'all, there's all kinds of links. All kinds of links, all right? In the description box, you're going to find the free block printout for today's block. You're going to find a link to the larger quilt block. If you want to make this block larger, I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Uh, it's an option. You don't have to do it, but if you're interested in it, that link is down below. Uh, just to let you know, that is a paid pattern. Those are $2.50. You get an SVG cutting file with it, and the day that we do the block for the next week, that block will be on sale. So if you're interested in doing the larger version, the week we do the block is probably the best time to get it. You'll also find uh, a link for the supply list in case you missed getting that. You'll find a link to a video showing how I like to join my quilt as you go blocks. There's lots of different ways to do it, but I do have a link to a video showing how I am going to put all these blocks together because we're not going to be spending time doing that during these videos. We're going to focus on the block itself. Uh, there's also uh, tons and tons of links to all the stuff that you might or you might not see me use. Okay, lots of stuff down there. Uh, so if you're wondering about my iron or the markers or any of that stuff, I've put it all in one place so you can quickly find out and do some research on the stuff that I'm using. As I stated a second ago, these are not going to be really fast videos. Many of you, this might be the first time you're doing applique. 
I'm so excited for you. Uh, many of you have started your journey with applique and you want to know more. Many of you are pros at doing applique and you might not want to sit through the whole video. You might want to skip around or just come in, get the pattern from the box and be on your way, right? Feel free to skip around if you're watching on the replay. Uh, now, let me just tell you, this quilt was designed in its nature uh, to progress you through your skills, okay? So um, if you've been doing applique or you started recently, this quilt is designed for you to come in where you are and hopefully by the end of this series, you have improved on your skills, right? That's my hope for you during this series. The sizes of these blocks, y'all, these are five inch blocks. The sizes of the pieces in their nature, because they're smaller, are going to present a challenge to those of you who don't like working with smaller pieces or who have just started doing uh, machine or hand stitch applique, right? There are ways, and this is where I want to encourage you, there are ways to do these blocks where you don't have to stitch the things down, and we'll talk about those ways. So if this is intimidating to you because of the size, I still want you to come in and I still want you to join in if you want to because you don't have to do it the way that you see me doing it. There's always multiple ways to do anything. So yeah, approach this quilt where you are and my hope is to push you to try things that you haven't tried yet, right? This might mean uh, using permanent markers or fabric markers instead of doing hand stitches. This might mean using um, Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. It's one of the things I've linked down in the box uh, because then you're not stitching down all of these tiny pieces, right? You cut them out, you fuse them, and you're done, right? This might mean um, hand stitching your applique instead of using the sewing machine. All different ways that you can uh, do these blocks where you are. So, yes. All right, so each week the five inch block PDF is gonna be free. So I encourage you to share these blocks with your friends, to get together in small groups if you hang out and, uh, and to make this quilt project. All right, I think that's all the notes. Let's go ahead, <laughs> that was a lot. Let's go ahead and switch down to the cutting mat. I'm gonna show you a few things. All right, this is the PDF of all the supplies that you may or you may not need. The top portion right here in this box tells you for the entire quilt, right? Your sashing square uh, pieces, your batting, <clears throat> your binding, all of that stuff. It also talks about uh, notions that you might need, you might find helpful. You don't necessarily need all of this stuff but you might find it helpful to use this stuff. And then it talks about the dates and the times and all about that stuff, right? You might already have that. Each week, this is what your block uh, PDFs are gonna look like. And let's just talk about this for a second. This is a true to size five inch square with a layout of your pieces. I'm gonna use this to put my pieces on my fabric here in a minute. Each week, these pieces, your template pieces, have not been mirror imaged. So if you're using freezer paper for your applique, you're ready to trace. And if you're using Heat and Bond Light, Wonder Under Steam a Seam, you might find it helpful to have a light pad or a window because you want to trace your pieces from the back side. I have not indicated that on these pages anywhere. But what you will find each week is some little helpful notes that I might have jotted down when I was drawing out the pieces, okay? So just keep that in mind. Freezer paper, trace from the right side. Fusible products, trace from the back side. All right, so we're gonna use that here in a minute. Now, this is the sampler that I made. If you wanna see um, 
all of the 16 blocks, check out the video I did for how I joined my blocks together. And at the end of this video, if you haven't seen it, I do a walkthrough and a flip through of all 16 blocks that are going to be included. This is only six of them, but how cute is that, right? Super cute. I'm really excited uh, to do each of the blocks that I haven't done yet, but I'm doing all of these again with you. Now, let me just put that on the floor. This is the 12 inch version. Isn't that cute? So each of the 12 inch versions, there will be elements to the blocks that just don't fit within a five inch block, right? So um, yeah, and the patterns that come with this are kind of lengthy. They have uh, the things you need to make this block. You have an extra project at the bottom, like I'm making all of mine into mini quilts. Um, but if you want to turn this block into a quilt, it has all the things you need for that with sashing and a border. Uh, and it walks you through piecing everything together. It has uh, a full size layout to place your pieces, right? And then of course it has all of the tracing templates and one more page. Usually uh, on these, these patterns, I like to include some special notes on the stitches that I used for mine, like suggested stitches. But again, my way is not the only way. But isn't that super cute? I decided for my big blocks to do mini quilts so that I could arrange them to fit an awkward space. Uh, so that's what I'm doing with my bigger blocks. Wait, to, this is a preview of next week. Isn't he cute? I have not finished stitching down the applique on this yet. So you'll see a finished version of this next week. Super cute. So that is the larger block, right? So uh, in this video, I really wanted to show and tell about the fabric that I'm using with you in the live videos because oftentimes I have people asking, um, what fabric are you using? Where did you get that fabric? Who's that fabric made from? so that you can might find it. And sometimes those questions are asked a year or two later. And by then I have, I don't have any clue. So let's just start this series off by going over the fabrics that I'm going to use. Okay. Uh, for all of my background squares for the tops and the backs, I'm using a Kona solids uh, by Robert Kaufman. I did link this down in the description box. Look how many pieces you get. And I love the colors, uh, 85 pieces. And um, so this is what I'm going to use for the tops and the backs of my block, the Kona solids. For my applique, I am picking from two fat quarter bundles. So let me just turn these on the side. Aren't these beautiful colors? I love them so much. And uh, so this is Hidden Canyon, uh, the Fat Quarter Bundle by Robert Kaufman. So I'll be picking from these Fat Quarters. And because I've kind of fallen in love with the texture of flannel and wool, I decided that I could also pick from these. And this is the Shetland Flannel Fat Quarter Bundle by Robert Kaufman. Uh, I've kind of really just fallen in love with the feel of it. Even though it frays and it's a little trickier to work with, I still really love it. Okay, so there's that. I'll be picking uh, from those two fat quarter bundles. Now, it might be that I need a color that isn't in those, so I might pull from my stash, but predominantly those will be the fabrics I'm using. And for my sashing, I've decided... Uh, might be hard to see in this light. This is a flannel also. And this is Rose Hips and Sweet Briar by Kathy Smith's by Moda. So if down the road uh, and you're watching live, if anyone asks, you know, while I'm not able to see it, 
what fabric are you using? Y'all can just say in the black one, she listed all the fabric, so you can go check that out. Tracy said, for a beginner, which size block do you recommend? Well, Tracy, because I am saying this Quilt As You Go series is moved to push you out of your comfort zone, I really want to suggest to you to go with the free version, right? To try to try the five inch block because we can do it so that even you being a beginner, you can do it as well. The pieces are smaller, but it'll really push you uh, and to gain some experience cutting smaller pieces, right? If you can cut these small pieces, the bigger block will be a breeze. The only reason I say do this one is because this one is free. <laughs> And the other one is a paid version, right? Now, because of the size of the bigger one, you might find it easier to do the bigger one. You just might. And I don't want you to get frustrated. If you try this and you're just getting frustrated and you're going to walk away from it altogether, definitely try the bigger one. Okay? All right. So those are all my fabrics that I'm using. And I think that's everything that I wanted to cover before we start with block number one, right? So here we are. And uh, I've already cut out my pieces. Each week I'm gonna have the pre-cutting stuff done, right? So that we can move on and just start with the block. I have the things that I'm gonna need. So let's go over that. I have two of the uh, charm packs and uh, I'm going to use the blue one as my top fabric and this tan or light brown one as the backing. I'll be using warm and natural. Uh, it's very thin. Cotton batting. Uh, it withstands the heat very nicely and uh, and I really like and I have a ton of scraps of it. So that's what I'm using in the middle between these fabrics. Okay. Oh, I really want to slow down because I feel like if we take it nice and slow, I won't forget anything. And hopefully if you have questions, I'll catch them. Certainly when I'm at the sewing machine, uh, I miss a lot. So um, just keep that in mind. So let me turn on my iron because we're going to get started. I hear rolls of thunder and it's getting darker outside. Just to let y'all know, I have used uh, Heat and Bond Featherlight. It seems to be my newest favorite <laughs> uh, fusible product because here lately I've been doing lots of hand sewing and I can get my needle through that adhesive a lot easier, okay? Jackie said, I was given eight inch white squares and used your video on how to tea stain and coffee dye them. Should I tea dye the other squares to match the white squares? Uh, for this particular project, I almost wanna say yes, but also no. You'll see uh, when I had my example up here, I used tea stain muslin on all of my blocks. So the backgrounds would match from square to square. And this quilt, I'm mixing up it up and all of my backgrounds are gonna be different. So uh, I think no matter which way you do, you'll get different looks, right? I love doing some tea stained uh, and coffee stained fabric. All right, is that heating up? Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and pre-fuse my applique pieces. This is not necessary, uh, but for me, I find it really helpful, okay? And I say it's not necessary because on the pattern pieces, I've indicated where these pieces will overlap. So if you don't have this little silicone mat, uh, 
it's really not necessary but I find it really helpful okay so I'm gonna move over my pressing board like this and I'm gonna bring over this silicone mat y'all this is just like a cookie sheet a cooking mat Amazon basics and you can see through it right and uh, we can fuse our pieces here and then pick it up as one piece and put it on our block. So let's see, we're starting with piece A. You'll notice I have not taken the fusible off. Hopefully I haven't lost any pieces. Is that piece A? No, it's piece C. All right, let me just do a little score, which helps take that paper off. I just score it with a little needle, and it really helps take that paper right off the back. So we're starting off with piece C. And I'm just going to lay it right over top of that position right there. The silicone just really helps grip it. Piece D. And that's going to overlap right there. A, B, C, D, E. I do think that some of these logs, well, this one's gonna be a long, on the longer side because we have all of that prelim stuff that we just talked about. We won't have to do that every video. <laughs> but uh, some of these blocks, I do feel like, are gonna go by faster than others. Some blocks have more pieces than others, and some blocks might have more details that uh, I do by hand, which takes me a little bit longer, or by machine. So um, I really feel like I'm just blocking Friday afternoons off, and we'll see how long each video takes us. So each of these petals have extra fabric built in so that we're overlapping those petals just a little bit. And then piece I is the very center of the flower. And it overlaps all of those petals. All right, so now I'm just fusing these pieces and basically making this one piece to put onto our block. And I'm doing this for not only the smaller blocks, but for the bigger blocks too. And that's one thing I wanted to state too, because I'm not doing video tutorials for the big blocks, because basically the bigger blocks are made just like the little ones. They just have extra things to them, right? Like words that you may or may not want to add. You don't have to add them if you don't want them on there. Uh, but I'm basically doing the same thing, just in a larger version. So once that's cooled off, we can lift this up. And I like to just kind of bend that mat and lift the whole piece right up just like that. And that's how I'm using the silicone mat. Many of you reached out and said, you have a silicone mat listed in the things that you need. What do you use that for? That is how I use the silicone mats. So now we can bring in our block. If you wanted to, you could even put this on a light pad. You might be able to see through your fabric if you really want to line everything up, right? I'm just going to eyeball this part. 
So we can bring in the flower, which kind of goes like that a little bit. And we have our two little leaves. Wow, we have rolling thunder. This was B, so this one goes on this side. I feel like you need to come up a little bit. There you go. Just keep in mind that when you're positioning your pieces, you will have the sashing pieces or a binding uh, that comes over into your block. So be mindful that you don't put it too close to the edge. Tornado warning in Maryland. Yeah, we're going to have some pretty good storms coming through. We're not very far away from Maryland. All right, I think that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and fuse these pieces right down to my block. And that just takes a couple seconds. Depending on what fusible you're using, make sure to just follow the instructions that came on the package because each one of the fusing instructions is different. And we're gonna let that cool off for a second. All right, so let's talk about this for a second. If you used the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold or any other, that's not fused down very well, any other fusible that is permanent, guess what? That is a super beginner way to do this block because you are done. You do not have to stitch down these tiny pieces. You're all done. And that's it. Uh, you could go on to layering or embellishing and all the stuff that you want to do, right? Um, so that's a beginner way to do this. Everything I do to this block after this, you would not have to do. All right, I wanted that to cool off for a second because I am going to draw the little stem and give myself a guide. I'm going to do a chain stitch for my stem with you, but I don't want it to disappear. <laughs> Any markings that I make for details that I want to give myself, but I don't want them to be permanent, I'm going to be using the uh, friction fine liners because they disappear when they're heated up. And this is a line that I don't necessarily want it to stay at the end. If you are super beginner or you don't like doing handwork or this is not something you'd want to do by machine, if you wanted to add a stem there, you could use a fabric marker. And uh, I really like for small details like this, the Micron pins, they come in uh, like blacks and browns and different colors, I think. They're archival ink, and they have different thicknesses on the tips. So you can do lots of details like eyes, stems, words, things like that. Very easy and permanent. And what I like about these uh, is that they don't expand into your fabric and become fuzzy. So if you don't want to do any stitching on the stem, maybe consider something like that. All right, I think that's cooled off enough that this won't fade. I'm just giving myself a guide for that stem and I'm gonna do a chain stitch and I'm gonna try to do it quickly. We will see how quick I can be. <laughs> I want it to be neat, and I don't want to rush, but I also don't want to lose you because this part is boring. And sometimes I think, well, Lisa, it would speed up the videos if you did some of this before we went live, but I really want you to uh, not only have an opportunity to hang out with everybody, but to see you know, this is what I'm looking at if I want to 
to do this by hand, this is, you know, time-wise, this is what it would be. Nita said, you're not ever boring. Thank you, Nita. All right, for my chain stitch, I'm going to do it now uh, because I want all my knots and stuff to be hidden in the middle of this quilt block and the batting. So you could do this now. I don't know why that's not sticking. Hold on a second, y'all. You could do this now or after your block is quilted. I might have actually overheated that adhesive too much because <laughs> it's not wanting to stick. See that? It is possible to overheat your adhesive. So you know what? I'm going to move that off for a minute and I'll use a glue stick here in a second. So for my chain stitch, I came up through the back and I'm going right back down in that same hole. I do have short videos if you want to come back <laughs> once I'm done with this. I did some shorter videos on the chain stitch, but I'm basically leaving a loop on the top and bringing my needle through that loop each time. Oh, no, hold on a second, Lisa. Focus. All right, there's my loop. I travel over for my next stitch. Come up through that loop. There we go. And there's my first chain stitch. And then I'm just traveling right up that stem, bringing my needle through that loop each time. And I think I really like this chain stitch because it gives it a little bit uh, more thickness, right? And because, believe it or not, it's pretty quick <laughs> as far as ch uh, hand stitches go. This is the stitch that I used in the larger version to do all of my words. And I know that uh, I might not be close enough to it for you to really see the detail of the stitches. So uh, you might want to check out the chain stitch video that I did if you want to really see like close up. But it does move along pretty quick, right? I'm going to tell you, I always confessed that I didn't have the patience for hand stitching. And you know what? That wasn't a lie. I was being very truthful all the times I said that. So I don't know if I've developed a patience for it or if by doing it and learning it, I've gotten quicker. <laughs> so my patience isn't exhausted when I'm done. But I'm going to tell you, I have thoroughly enjoyed learning the stitches. And I think that it adds uh, a dimensional quality to my blocks that is kind of hard to repeat using a sewing machine. Let's see, we're almost there. You'll see, I'm kind of fumbly with it. <laughs> this is true life. Except usually I have my work closer to my face so I can see better and I'm trying to stay in the middle of the screen. So it, it does feel a little awkward. All right, we've got one more. 
one more little loop. And I think that I really just overpressed my fusible. To end it, we're just going right on the other side of that loop, right back down to the back. Nice and neat, just like that. And there's my pretty little stem. So I'm just gonna tie a knot on the back and we'll be ready to move right on. Okay, so that was that. Let me bring in this glue stick, which I left over here. And we're going to snip this thread. Y'all, I broke my snips. <laughs> that was not good. I have another pair that's going to be here today. I broke my snips on my long arm. I stitched right over top of them. That's not good. All right, so if you've overfused your fusible, which happens, you know, occasionally, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue stick just to keep them in place. until they're stitched down. There we go. <laughs> this little iron gets hot and I think I just really overfused it when I put it on the back of the fabric to begin with. It is possible, it's not hard to do to overheat that. All right. Lori said, this is my first time here. What are you doing? Lori, you're coming in on the very first video of a quilt along. Quilt as you go with lots and lots of applique. So y'all, uh, you know I'm a huge glue baster. I'm gonna glue baste uh, my three layers together, right? You could use pins if this is not your thing. I totally get it. I'm using a clear Elmer's glue stick and I'm going to layer my pieces for my block. Just like this. And then I'm going to dry that glue with my iron so that we can stitch these pieces down. What is the tiny blue flower for? Oh, that's a needle threader. Uh, I have a harder time getting the thicker threads through the needle, so that just helps me thread the hand sewing needle. All right, y'all, so my pieces are basted together. That glue should be pretty dry. We're gonna let that cool off for a second. All right, I think I missed a question. I'm struggling to find your Elmer School glue sticks here in France. Only uh, offered re-stick or goes on purple, dries clear. Says it's washable. Can you please suggest what type I should go for? Probably not the re-sticking ones. Uh, if you can't find the, the clear ones, use the purple ones. A big reason why I switched over from the purple to the clear is because I found that sometimes I put on too much and the purple doesn't, uh, doesn't, go away under lighter fabrics. And I use white and tea stained muslin a lot. And sometimes I find that if I use too much, the purple stays purple. But if you go really light with it, uh, you should be fine. Okay. All right, so at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and start stitching down my pieces. I don't know why. 
they kind of wrinkled up a little bit, which tells me that that wasn't exactly cotton. That's weird. That's interesting. I'm going to pay attention to that. Um, so if you are true, you know, just starting out and you want to stitch these down, you could absolutely hand stitch all of these pieces down and you might actually find that relaxing to do, right? So uh, if machine stitching these pieces down is like, no, that is just beyond where I am, try hand stitching them. But I do encourage you to try machine stitching at some point through this series. Because again, the purpose of doing this series is to push you beyond where you are now to the next level. All right, so um, I have some black thread in my sewing machine right now. And I thought I would use black a lot because it goes with all the fabrics I'm using and it kind of stands out. And uh, I think it would look really cool. You know, there's lots of pieces, uh, black work pieces, where people use only black thread or red work pieces where they only use red thread. I thought predominantly in this series I would use black even though... Um, It might not go with all the little pieces I'm doing, but in the big scheme of thing from block to block, that will be a constant. Okay, so let's switch over to the sewing machine. There we go. You'll see how my block just did a little wrinkling up. I'm not sure why that happened. I'm gonna investigate it though when we're done. Okay, so I have black thread in both the top and the bottom. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you'll see I'm stitching down my pieces with the three layers. When I stitch down my applique at this part, that's also going to serve as me quilting this quilt block, right? Um, you could, if you didn't want to stitch it down with the layers, you could stitch down all of your applique before you make the layers. Again, there are so many different ways that you could approach it. So uh, think about which way might work better for you. Now, I will say when I'm over here, my phone's over there. So I won't be able to see your questions, but we do have lots of people who can help you. If you have questions while I'm stitching, or you might want to hold off until I'm done. Now I do know that I'm going to be using a, a huge array of different stitches and I'll give you the settings that I'm using, but that does not necessarily mean that if you use the same stitch and settings in your machine, that it's going to look the same when you stitch it out. So I always recommend testing your stitches on a scrap piece of fabric before you start stitching. So, uh, Let's just start with stitching down these petals. I'm going to use a small little zigzag stitch. It's going to be small. Let me just see what this looks like. I want it even smaller than that. I don't know if you can see that or not. It is small. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to go with that. I'll be glad when my new snips get here. The settings, I'm going to stitch down these pieces, the little petals. The length is a 0.5. And the length is a 2.0. And I'm using the zigzag stitch. All right, here we go.
I do think the black thread will make a really nice outline around my pieces. Now, because uh, we've overlapped these pieces, you'll see that I didn't go all the way back up to the very center of that flower because this petal overlaps this one. So I broke thread right there and I'm gonna start at the top. of the next petal. That's gonna overlap where we ended on that petal right there. check something real quick because it kind of looks blurry to me. Give me just a second, y'all. That looks really blurry. There we go. Let's go with that. <laughs> I want you to be able to see what we're doing. Now this petal overlaps this one, so I'm just going to come right all the way up. And then I'm going to jump right back down here. start there. A zigzag stitch, in theory, sounds very, very simple, right? But when I first started doing zigzag stitches on applique, I actually thought it was kind of confusing because I would get these weird gaps in my stitches. But remembering where the needle needs to be when you're turning everything changed all of that for me. So um, just keep in mind where your needle is when you're turning your work. An easy uh, way for me to remember is that uh, if you're turning your work to the right, you want your needle to be in the right. If you are turning your work to the left, you want your needle to be in the left hand position. The zigzag stitch goes back and forth left and right.
Now this petal overlaps the one next to it, so I'm going to come all the way up. And then I'm going to come back down here to the bottom. And I'm starting in that previous zigzag stitch, so the start and stop is hidden within that stitch. And this petal is overlapping this one, so we're going to come all the way up. Ooh, we have thunder. All right, we're going to start right at the bottom of this petal. If you want to lock these stitches in, you could do a little back stitch there to help lock those stitches in place. Um, because I don't ever foresee really using this quilt, it's going to be like a wall quilt. I'm not doing that because it does create a little thickness right there that sometimes is visible. Uh, but if you are uh, unsure of that, you might want to do a little back stitch just to help lock in that zigzag stitch. All right, let me cut all of these little jump stitches out of the way with my messed up little clips here. <laughs> Now I'm going to use the, the same exact zig stack, zigzag stitch to stitch the center portion of that flower. So let me go ahead and do that while we're right here. All right, so there's my flower. Isn't she cute? Let's take this off for a second and let me just clean up these little stitches. And make her a little bit more presentable. At this point, all we have left to do is to stitch down the little leaves. And I think I wanna do a blanket stitch. And I think that switching up your different stitches within the same block really adds uh, a corkiness to it uh, and it looks really sweet. You don't have to do it, but uh, I think it adds some interest to your pieces. So I'm going to switch to a blanket stitch. 
and I need my blanket stitch to be on the smaller side so let me just try out some sizes here a little bit bigger than that and a little bit longer. All right, so the settings that I'm gonna use for um, my blanket stitch is a 1.8 in the length and a 1.8 in the width, meaning how far over into the leaf fabric it's gonna come. Uh, last time I did uh, applique I think it was for the mug rug someone asked why I don't start at the little points you can basically start anywhere that you want to I usually like to start on a straight of way or a longer section versus in those points but that's just me The straight part of this blanket stitch is just running along the edge of the leaf. It is really coming down now. Woo. You can see how small that little blanket stitch is, but isn't that adorable looking? It's so cute. To tie off my blanket stitch, I just usually overlap the beginning just a little bit. checked when you start you want your needle to be on the right hand position not on the left Let me cut this little jump stitch. I was hoping my new snips were actually supposed to be here yesterday, <laughs> but they didn't make it. And now it says today. I was hoping they'd get here before this video. But that's all right. See, I just stitched right over top of that hand stitching. That's okay. <laughs> All right, we're back to where we started, and I'm just going to take a couple more little stitches. And there we go. Now, uh, 
I'm going to say all of my pieces are stitched down and they're quilted at the same time. I've got a lot of jump stitches to trim off, right? But this block is quilted at this point. If you did your stitching down of the applique, and we're going to stay right here so you can see the block really clear for a minute. If you did, if you stitched down all of the applique before creating your layers, you still want to do some kind of stitching to quilt those three pieces together, right? You could come in and do a little outline stitch around your flower. You could do that by machine or by hand. You could echo your leaves and you could do a meandering in the background, all kinds of things. Uh, or you could stitch down your pieces when it's layered and do that as part of your quilting and still keep on going. You could do a meandering or a little loopy design in the background and really quilt this uh, all the way out to the edges if you wanted to. For mine, I'm gonna keep them simple. And for this block, that's all the quilting that I'm gonna do uh, for this particular block. So that's a really good look right there. I don't know that you'll see it as close up when we switch back to this other camera. Yes, Miss Dari said, before we end, can I share the dates again? Yep, we'll go back to that screen here in just a second. Tracy said, I have an older brother sewing machine. Let me switch over to this other. Uh, there we go. I have an older brother sewing machine. I don't think it has a blanket stitch option. Would you use a straight stitch or another zigzag? You could do either, Tracy, but let me just show you uh, on your machine. You want, if it shows pictures of your stitches, look for this. Uh, it'll have a straight line going down like this. And this is how the machine setting will look on most machines. Uh, and people call this all different kinds of stitches, right? I call it a blanket stitch. But see if your machine has something like that. You could even use an overlocking stitch, right? And people call this different things too, but... Something like this would look super cute. You certainly do not have to use the stitches that I used. And to be really honest, it would look cute with so many different stitches. All right. So, uh, yeah, here's my block. I'm going to try and figure out. I might have had, I'm going to tell you, this iron gets super crazy. And I did. I had it turned all the way up to the max. This iron gets hot, y'all. So I don't know if I scorched something. But you wouldn't think that the cotton would have uh, crinkled up like that. So I might have to wet this and just uh, let it dry to get rid of that. I don't know why it did it. But I might have had my iron too hot. Let's trim these back stitches before I switch over. And I'll put the dates on the screen for the next few blocks. <laughs> these little clips remind me of like when my nails grow out and I break one. <laughs> Every time I use them, I'm like... That re that's exactly what it reminds me of. I not only broke the tip off, but I also messed up how they work. So they don't exactly cut all the way. But they still do get closer down to the fabric versus a regular pair of scissors for me. So we're just going to make them work. But I sure did. I was quilting, quilting, quilting. And I heard this ka-clunk sound. I was like, what was that? And I forgot I had laid my snips. And the machine just 
clipped them and kept right on going. <laughs> All right, so there we are. There is my black one. I think she's super bright and cheerful. And I kind of really am digging the colored backgrounds. Let me bring over my other example. Just changing the fabric that you're using changes the whole look of the block, right? Both are super cute. So there is block one. Let's uh, go back to this screen. There's the dates of block two, three, four, and five. You'll notice block three is on a Monday. That's because I didn't want to skip a whole week and go like two weeks without doing a block. Ooh. The lights just flickered. I'm so glad that happened after we're done with everything. So if I lose you, it's because the power's going out. Oh, Pat said, I find the cheap cuticle cutter from the Dollar Tree is great for trimming close to your fabric. That is awesome. I've, all, I've often wondered if those were sharp enough. I'll have to pick some up. So now, y'all, that the block is done, it's a great time if I miss questions that weren't answered or if you've thought of some before we close out, we can just hang out for a minute. And... Uh, and I try to keep like my chit chatty stuff that may or may not be about this block at the very end so that if you have to go, I'm not holding you up. And um, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. I hope that uh, you give this a try. And one really cool thing about this quilt right or the quilt as you go quilt along stitch along whatever you want to call it 16 blocks you can wait uh until the very end and arrange the blocks any kind of way you don't have to put them in the order that we're doing them so you could move them all around you could choose to do eight of the 16 blocks and make a really cute uh quilt with just eight i did six as a little sampler and look how cute that is right so um so many different ways that you could customize this you could like look at the hearts aren't those cute uh very primitive simple looking hearts you could have a favorite block of the 16 and just repeat this block over and over again and make a whole quilt just using the same block how cute would that be right Let's put that there. There you go. Wouldn't that be cute? Just different colored flowers. Thank you, Pat. Some people love to chit chat and some people do not like it at all. And they're out of here, which is totally fine. I get it. I don't want to be holding y'all up uh, if you have things to do. So I try to keep that stuff towards the back, but I kind of enjoy because for some of you, this is the only chance I get to talk to you. And I like catching up. I like hearing about what's going on with you. And it's a really great time. It's really informal for Q&A kind of stuff, right? Oh, Rachel said, how about using them separately as coasters? Yes. Yeah. Uh I don't know if y'all saw it right on the back is my little birds uh, this way or that pattern. Uh, we did a coaster with the birds, which was super cute. So yeah, Rachel, I think these would be cute little coasters. They would. Eleonora said, please keep chatting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Marie said, I saw someone recently on YouTube who was using heat and bond and she, instead of scratching with a pen, she folded the piece about a third of the way in and the paper popped off in the corner. Yeah, you could do it either way. I just find it useful in the center to score it. Um, 
sometimes I find that if I fold it back, then I'm picking at the edges to try to get it to fold to pop off, and I end up messing up that raw edge. That's why I score it, but whatever works best for you, that's the way you should do it. Lisa said, are you using different materials like wool and, and instead of cotton? Nope. On this particular block, I used all cotton. I can't say that for these blocks because uh, some of it's cotton and some of it is flannel. Uh, but nope, everything in today's block was all cotton. I think I just had my iron. It was set to max, which I think was too much. I'm gonna to have to be mindful of that. Thank you, Sylvia. Teresa said I was actually able to sew along today. You still have to stitch it down. Well, I just wanna invite all of y'all to share your pictures over on the Creative Crew. There's a link in the description box where you could just jump over there and do that. Uh, but we would love to see your progress in these blocks. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Uh, Gail said, uh, thanks for sharing. I really like how you teach. Very easy to follow. A lot of the times you'll hear me repeat the same things from video to video. And one reason why I do that, because this might be the hundredth time you've watched me. And this might be your first. And... Uh, no matter where you are, we're always talking about doing different things. So I kind of like to, to talk you through it. And some of y'all are going to hear me say the same things over and over again. But some of you, uh, this will be the first time you hear me say it. So I like to repeat myself a lot. Carla said, oh, Carla said, uh, I finished it. I only used a straight stitch to put them down but I'm still nervous, I'm gonna mess it up. Carla was stitching along with me. She had her pieces all ready to go today. Debbie said, can I watch this later? I have to go to work. Yes, the beauty of uh, the YouTubes is that if you have to leave before we're done or if you can't make one of the dates and you miss it, you can always come back on the replay the replay is available to watch as soon as we're done. It might take a second, but it should pop up here on my channel. So let me just tell you, uh, the easiest way to find these videos will be, of course, to subscribe and click the bell notification and choose all. You'll get notified whenever I go live, right? Um, and there's also a playlist. So if you want to wait a couple weeks and then catch up, all of the videos will be listed in the same place in the playlist. And there's a link for that in the description box. Sheila said, some of us need to hear it multiple times. Then y'all are like me. <laughs> uh, I'm a very visual learner. And so hearing it, hearing instructions, and then doing it hands-on is the best way for me to learn. Uh, so that's one reason why I'm grateful for the replays as well. Because even though I'm really trying to take my time and not rush these videos, I am going at a faster pace than some of you might be comfortable going. And I totally understand that. So the beauty of the replay is that uh, you can watch and come back later if you need to, and then stitch along and pause it if you want, right? Is the back quilted? Let me just show you, Corrine, the back. On this particular block, I quilted it when I stitched down my applique. You could still keep on going, right? A meandering stitch or a, a really loose, like, uh, loop design would look super cute. But that's all the quilting I'm going to do on this particular piece. On these, let me just show you. 
Uh, the quilting was done when I did the applique as well. So you can see that on the back. Teresa said, I'm the same way. Tell me, show me, let me do it. <laughs> I've been that way uh, ever since, like, even in grade school. I'm a hands-on kind of learner with everything. Yeah, Linda's got Storm Strong. She's leaving. I will tell you, uh, I'm glad the power didn't click off. It flickered a few minutes ago. All right, everybody. I am looking forward to this upcoming next few days to see your blocks. If you're making this quilt, I hope you share it. There's mine. And uh, again, we're not going to be joining the blocks together. So when I come back next week, I might have the sashing parts added to this. If you want to see how I do it, there's a video linked in the description box. It's not the only way to do it. And so I suggest if you've never done the quilt as you go to check out multiple videos and choose a way that in your mind works the easiest because we're all different, right? But we're not going to be focusing on joining the blocks. We're going to be focusing on making the blocks. So um, I have linked to that video and there's many, many others from other really awesome creators here on YouTube. So check those out. Corrine said, I put my mug rug on Creative Crew. Corrine, guess what? I saw it right before the live. You did so good. It was adorable. Connie is cutting men's shirts. Yeah, Mary Ann said, there's the watching, then there's the doing. I'm thankful for the replays. All right, everybody, uh, have a fantastic holiday weekend. Uh, if I don't see you on the Creative Crew, I don't think I have anything else going on YouTube until next Friday. So if I don't see you on the Creative Crew, I will see you on the 3rd, June the 3rd. This year is almost halfway over. Isn't that crazy? That seems crazy to me. <laughs> It just feels like time is just flying by so fast. All right, everybody, have fun with this block, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.